be of the blood of Jesus it is no longer I it is no longer you that live it so anyone that tries to bring you down will be disappointed anyone that tries to dig a pit for you will fall into the pit Galatians 2 20 all right the Bible says Paul say he said, I am crucified with Christ. He said, but nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. And the life which I now live in this flesh, I live it by faith of the Son of God, who loved me, gave himself for me. Hallelujah. All right, this morning, the theme it is no longer I that live it. Amen. And we can foresee one reason, the purpose for where Paul, the apostle, writes this book. Now before address the Judaizers them, or the Jew people them because they may believe in the laws and they may believe in the ceremonies and ordinances of the Old Testament. And so it comes to a point where Paul decides for address the people of that time, especially the one that will come out from Judaism and come to the place where they begin for belief in Jesus. But when they can't believe in Jesus, then be still feel say, then go continue their salvation, for let them continue for enjoy salvation, then for continue for observe the ceremonial laws of the Old Testament. Then begin for see, say, well, now for the depend on the priest for sacrifice, then for the offer goat and sheep and all other ceremonial practices for maintain their salvation. So, Paul can for tell them, say, well, this, that you will need for address, for pulling a mind from these ceremonial practices, we have been believed, say, now only the priest for be una intermediary, where for the mediate between God and una, and also they do intercession, and also they make atonement for una. And so Paul tried to pull their attention, they, for make them understand, say, they are no more under the old covenant, but now that it appoints them for make them depend on the mediator when at Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And today as well, we want to make ourselves come to the point and realize, say, the Bible don't tell, we say, there is only one mediator. There are certain people who still hold on to the law. So people in the way go tell you, say, well, pastor, me are they up, so I know they can't church. We get them Christian, they take today. Well, pastor, what you make cannot can church? You know, say the moon they up, so now I make cannot can church. Whether the moon they up, they down, you not get nothing. As much as this uh, grace, as much as we do under grace and not under the law, whether you the moon they up or they don't free for come church. We get some Christians, then we go tell you, say, well, we are done born past 40 days before I come church because if within that 40 days I am unclean. Lie, lie. That one under grace is not recognized. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ will not come and say, it is finish so he don't do away with all of this so paul try for address the people them and tell them say number one he says i am crucified with christ meaning that the day you and i as christians don't accept jesus christ as lord and savior then immediately we are now what crucified with him hallelujah now, Paul tried to make we understand this very, very quickly. Let's go. We'll come back to Galatians. But media, let's go back to Romans chapter 6 very quickly. For Paul, for lay emphasis on the crucifixion. He said, I am crucified. The word crucified means I, have, I am dead with Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word that means mortification. It also means killed. Hallelujah. That means Paul don't accept. Said the day. 
I accept Jesus Christ, I have been crucified. I have been killed. I have been put to death. I have been mortified. Hallelujah. That means as Christians, the day you accept Jesus Christ, you are dead. Hallelujah. Hello. Paul says, I am crucified. That means I have been killed with Christ. I am dead with Christ. Hallelujah. And then let's go. Verse 3. Give me 3. Give me three. All right. He said, Know ye not. Hallelujah. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Now he was also telling the church, now Rome, he said, Know ye not, eagle's height. Know ye not, young adult. Know ye not, youth. Know ye not, men, women, pre you children. Know ye not that so many of us that we are baptized into Christ, we are baptized into his death. Hallelujah. The baptizing there is not talking about water baptizing actually. Symbolically, he's talking about the day we accepted Jesus Christ, we have been baptized spiritually into Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so therefore he was saying, now notice that the moment you are born again, you have been baptized into his death. Hallelujah. So in other words, what is the Bible expecting that as a Christian who have accepted Jesus Jesus Christ, you are dead to sin. You are dead to immorality. You are dead to lies. You are dead to jealousy. You are dead to malice. You are dead to gossip. You are dead to hypocrisy. You are dead to so many things. That's why Paul says in verse 1 of this same chapter, it says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He said, God forbid it. Why? Because we have been crucified with Christ. Hallelujah. We are now dead. And there is a book we read, I think it was Treasure Island during our days in Form 1. It says, the dead man tell no tale. Hallelujah. A man that is dead can a man who is dead gossip? Man, where they die, if they lie, man, where they die, where well don't die, go thief. Man, where don't die, he go fetch for man or fetch for woman. Man, where don't die, go live abnormally. No, because he is dead, he is completely dead to the world. And therefore, Paul the try for being we of follow, we know say as Christians, once we are crucified with Christ, we are no more living the life that we supposed to live anymore. That means we must for be crucified. Hallelujah. We eyes for be crucified. We entire body for be crucified. That means we wear how we've been to live, we for be dead to the world. So Paul says we have been crucified with Christ. We died with him. Hallelujah. The day you accepted Jesus Christ, when Jesus died, you aha, uh -huh, somebody afraid for talk about die. When Jesus died, you let me hear a chorus here. When Jesus died, you when Jesus died, you died. That's the truth. Spiritually, the day you accepted Jesus Christ. Remember some of us, we used to live some kind of life. But the moment you accept Jesus Christ and start for work out with her, you begin for laid and done, right? Alright? But actually, there are things we used to do before. But as you grow in the Lord, you've lost the pleasure about them. Because you are dead to those things. So Paul is saying that we are crucified. Notice that we are not crucified with Christ. Yeah, let's go, sir. Verse 4. He said, therefore, we are buried with him in baptism into death. That's like what? As Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so should, even so, when Christ rose up, he rose up in the newness of life. And so as Christ rise up horses, so even so we self for young resurrection is that we should show the world that we are living a newness of life. If you have been crucified with Christ, then you must live a life of newness. The things that you used to do, you should not be known about them anymore. But nevertheless, these things do happen. But what Paul saying, if we are crucified with Christ, then we should try to live a life so that when the world see us, they will know that we are Christians. In Matthew 5, 14, he said, you are the light of the world, right? 
He said, no man lights a light and put it under a bushel, but it puts it on top of a lampstand so that it will give light to everyone that is in the house and that you are the salt of the earth. And if a soul lose its saltiness, then it has no need anymore but to throw it so that people would trod upon it. But in verse 16, he gave us an advice. He said, let your light so shine before men that when men see you and your good work, that that glory will go to God. But some of us as Christians, we are still, we are being in the faith for five years, ten years, fifteen years, and we are still disappointment to the church. And we have to give an account. You need to die to self. You need to die. You need to kill that ego. Hallelujah. You need to die. I am a child of God. I am not a man of God. I am a child of God. And in fact, I am a servant of God to serve God's people. Because uh, when you die, you do not take a title as anything. When you die, God does not uh, have anything to do with title. He is more concerned about people that he will tie to himself and not the title. A, a man that is alive will say, you know me? Me not a doctor. You know me? You know the degree I get? You know the position I get? You know the kind of people where they feed? Yes, me self, they feed people. Do you know the caliber of people where they control? Yes, in this church and out of the church. Do you know the caliber of people that comes and call me for advice? Yes, but that should not make. Because of that, I cack their shoulder there. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. The more God ends you up, the more you for bring yourself down. Because God says he resists the pride and give grace to the humble. Child of God, he takes a man who is dead. John chapter 12 and verse 24. He said, except a cone of wheat fall down and die, he remains alone. The problem with the church, we have so many lively seeds that refuse to die. So when pastor rebuke, he don't get offense. When pastor preach, the preaching church, him, he don't get offense. For two weeks, he don't go can church. But a man who dies will run around and say, I'm ah, sorry. No wonder Paul says, he says, I die daily. As Christians, we die daily. What, do, what dies? The self, the ego in us must die daily. So when they rebuke me, I take rebuke. When they correct me, I take corrections. When they advise me, I take advice. Not all things we know. So Paul was saying that when we are broken, we should live a life to the newest. All right, let's go very quickly. Verse 5. He said, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we should also be what? We should also, we should be also in the likeness of his resurrection. If we don't say we die with Jesus Christ, and Jesus where he grabbed, he grabbed in the newness of life, so we also for be in the likeness of his resurrection. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, let's go back to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Verse 20. He said, I am crucified. How many people are crucified here now? Amen. And then he says another thing. He said, yet not I. That means Paul come to the point for now say, me I don't, I am now crucified with Christ. But if you see me singing, it is not me anymore. If you see me praising, it is not me anymore. If you see me working for Jesus, it is not me anymore. The real me was a drunkard. The real me was a fornicator. The real me was a liar. But when I died, I died and I rose up in the newness of life. If you see me singing for God, it is no longer I anymore. He said, nevertheless, now you see I live. Yet not I, but who? Christ that liveth in me. He said, nevertheless, I have this new life now. I don't want to be arrogant. I don't want to be proud. It is no longer I anymore. He said, it is no longer. I love that side of it. He said, nevertheless, I live. Nevertheless, I have the degree. 
Nevertheless, I have the accolades. Nevertheless, I have the fame. Nevertheless, I have all the opportunities. Nevertheless, I have all the associations and the affiliations. But let me let you know that it is no longer I. It was not me that walk for these things. It is not by my effort. It is no wonder Paul was saying, he said, I am what I am because of the grace of God. He is saying to us that we should realize that nevertheless Nathaniel is alive, yet not Nathaniel anymore, but Christ that liveth in me. So he's giving us the consciousness for let realize, say, as a Christian, wherever you go, somebody is living in the inside of you. Jesus in the inside should walk on the outside. Jesus in the inside must walk on the outside. People must see the difference. People must see your lifestyle. People must see that you are no more as an occult, an occultist. People must know that you are no more part of the Bondo society. You are no more of the Babani society. You are no more of the Poro society. You are no more part of occultism, visiting Moreman and Jujuman. When they say, hey, this thing and I forgo, forgo look, to, to look God, tell them that what Jesus cannot do does not exist. It is no longer I that live it, but Christ that live it in me. And he said that the life I now live in this flesh. I live by faith. Living by faith is having faith on the cross. The finished work on the cross. Mm. I will cleave to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's not about me anymore. It's not about you anymore. It's all about Jesus Christ on the cross. So he said the life I now live. I live it by faith in the Son of God. But this love it takes a man to leave heaven take the form of an ordinary man dies funnily for the sake of of you and I. He said God demonstrated his love for while we were yet, you name the sins. And certain people tell you, say they love you. It's because of one reason or the other, good reasons. But Jesus Christ, he loved you when you were in a worst condition. Hallelujah. And even so today, when some of us are still making him cry every day, he still loves his love is from everlasting to everlasting. 
And the Bible says, if Paul says, ah, if I live now, I'm living by faith in this flesh, by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And because he gave himself, he loved me, Paul says, now I know that it is no longer I who lives. So if you want to try me, try me. You go meet me, owner, because it is no longer I who lives. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. Children of God, you must be proud now to let the enemy know that if you want to attack me, it is no longer I that you will attack anymore because it is Christ that liveth in me. If you want to fight me, fight. You are not fighting me because it is no longer I. You are release arrow, release him. It is no longer I that liveth. That's the reason why I don't know about you. For me, I walk with audacity and sagacity. I move unharmed and unscratched. And I know because he's living in the inside of me. I am unkillable and I am undiable. No weapon will fashion against me that will prosper. Any tongue that rises up against me shall be condemned because it is no longer Nathaniel that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. And therefore, Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1, what did he say? He says, stand fast. Are you there? Give me Galatians chapter 5 as I close. 5 1. It says, Stand, stand fast, therefore, in the what's liberty? Freedom. Why? Because it is no longer I that live it, but Christ that live it in me. Why will I stand fast? It is no If you aim at me, they miss me now because no longer. Now look at me before and look at Christ behind me before. But now when I am baptized with him, what did he do? He took me and brought me behind him. And now what do you see? Do you see me? No. Who do you see? Christ. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 3, he said your life is hidden in Christ and in God. So you are secured. Am I talking to somebody? Your life is insured. The insurance company will insure your life. Now the insurance of Christ, you are insured. Your life is under insurance. Your life is under protection. Your life is under God's covering. You are under the canopy of the blood of Jesus. It is no longer I. It is no longer you that leave it. So anyone that tries to bring you down will be disappointed. Anyone that tries to dig a pit for you will fall into the pit because Jesus Christ can never fall into the pit. Listen to me. If you try me by mistake, I go answer you by correction. Because it is no longer I that leave it. So the Bible says, therefore stand in the liberty with Christ. Christ has made us Watch the, the screen. Christ has made us. Christ has made us. And be not. Uh-huh. So what? So who said God don't pull you? No goody. Because when you go there back, you do open doors for the enemy. For knock you. I get a message for you. That as you have accepted Jesus Christ, it is no longer you that live it, but Christ that live it in you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord preserve you. May your life be a testimony in Jesus' mighty name.